Okay, now that you have completed the design and layout of the PCB, you're ready to produce the output documentation needed to get the board reviewed, fabricated, and assembled. Because a variety of technologies and methods exist in PCB manufacture, Circuit Studio has the ability to produce numerous output types for different purposes. We'll go ahead and take a look at some of these. Uh, we'll look in the generate output section here for a couple, and we'll point out a few things while we're in here. Uh, your assembly outputs. So you have your assembly drawings. This is basically your component positions and orientations for each side of the board. Your pick and place files used by our robotic component placement machinery to place components onto the board. Your documentation outputs. So this will be your composite drawings, uh, the finished board assembly, components and tracks, uh, PCB 3D prints, and schematic prints for schematic drawings used in the design. Your fabrication outputs, uh, which could include your Gerber files, your NC drill files, ODB++ files, uh, report of the, the board layer stack. You also have your various uh, report outputs, so your bill of materials or a report for single pin nets, which is actually found in a different area. And we'll discuss the different ways of generating outputs, either through the output files or individually but if we also go look over here on the outputs panel we can see some of the other various reports and outputs that we can create and again as with the rest of the software take note of which document you're currently looking at so for example if we wanted a report of our single pin nets we do have to be focused on a schematic document and then we can find that under the outputs tab now, Circuit Studio has two separate mechanisms for configuring and generating output. The first way we can do this is individually. The settings for each output type are stored in the project file, and you can selectively generate that output when required from the buttons on the outputs tab. And again, taking note that if you're on a PCB or schematic, the outputs available to you will be different. And then these outputs are written to the folder that's specified in the output paths setting of your project options. And that is found here. So your output path here is where those will be stored. The other option is a managed release. And so when we do a managed release, all of your output settings are stored in a special file in the project folder. You then generate all enabled outputs in a single action from the Generate Outputs menu entry here. These outputs are written to a folder named Default Configuration, and once you have configured and enabled each required outputter, we simply click on the Generate button to generate the outputs into that folder. For this particular project, we're going to go ahead and use a managed release. So the Generate Output Files dialog can be opened at any time with a schematic open, a PCB open, or no, no document open. Uh, we simply go under the Project tab, locate the Generate Outputs button, and then go ahead and click on it. Note that when you open the dialog, the special file that holds the output settings is automatically created, uh, so the project file would now be marked as modified. Let's go ahead and just take a quick look at our projects panel. And you can see that because I've opened that, we now have a modified project file. So we do want to make sure uh, after we've set this up to save that project file, that's where that information is stored. So take note of the list of outputters that are included. For the tutorial, we will be using the Gerber files and the Bill of Materials outputter. We're going to go ahead and find Gerber files here and go ahead and click on the configure link. This will open up the Gerber setup dialog and this will be configured uh, in the next set of steps. So again, here in the Gerber setup dialog, we're going to go ahead and make a few changes. Uh, first thing, because we did this design in metric, let's go ahead and set the units to millimeters in the general tab of the dialog. The smallest unit used on the board is 0.25 millimeter for the routing and clearance, but because most of the components have their reference point at their geometric center and were placed on a 1 millimeter grid, some of their pads will actually be on a 0.01 grid. Now the default format of 4.4 on the general tab will more than ensure that the resolution of the output data is adequate 
to cover these grid locations. Also of note, the NC drill file should always be configured to use the same units and format. Let's just make sure that they're easier read and that everything lines up as expected. Let's go ahead and now switch to the layers tab. And then we're gonna click down here on plot layers. And we're gonna select used on. Note that some of the mechanical layers may become enabled because we do actually have items on them. And these are not always Gerbered on their own. Instead, they're often included if they hold detail that is required on other layers. For example, if there's an alignment location marker that's required on every Gerber file. In this case, the mechanical layer options on the right side of the dialog can be used to include that detail with another layer. For now, we're just gonna go ahead and disable the mechanical layers that were used there. We also probably do not need our top and bottom pad master, so we can go ahead and turn those off. Now, just a special note on the mechanical layers to add to all plots, you should only check this box if a layer was created with the specific intent of doing this, because it does exactly what it says. It will merge that mechanical layer with every layer output. So this is really only used if you have something like registration marks on the outside of the board, or maybe a board outline that you want to appear on every layer, but keeping in mind that this merges that with all other layers. Uh, so as an extreme example, if you had a mechanical layer that had a line drawn through your entire board and you enabled that layer, it's going to merge that line with every layer. You don't want that, that's gonna create shorts. So again, uh, mechanical layers to add to all plots, good option to have, but be mindful when you are using it, uh, that you're using it for the right reason. If you're just looking to add the mechanical layer as its own Gerber file, that should be done on the left-hand side. So next go to the advanced tab. What we really want to look at here is the reference or the position on film. We always want to make sure that the position on film exactly matches what we choose for our NC drill as well so that those files line up uh, when they're loaded into whatever cam package is going to be used. So we want to make sure that this is referenced to the relative origin. Everything else we can go ahead and leave at the default settings. So let's go ahead and click OK, so now that the Gerber settings are configured, the next step is to configure other outputs. For this tutorial, we're only going to also configure the bill of materials. Uh, we would also generally create NC drill files, set up some PCB prints, uh, maybe export a step file. We could include a design rule check and make sure that it passes uh, as validation before the rest of this is generated. And we'll likely create some short how-to videos on these. So kind of keep an eye on this space for new videos as they appear. So let's go ahead and continue on with configuring the bill of materials. Circuit Studio includes a highly configurable bill of materials generation feature, which can generate output in a variety of formats, including text, CSV, PDF, HTML, and Excel. Excel format bill of materials can also have a template applied using one of the predefined templates or one of your own. Your bill of material output is configured in the bill of materials for project dialog. And since we intend to use the managed release approach with our project, we want to open the bill of materials for project dialog from the generate output files dialog that we have here. On the bill of materials dialog, if we look down the left side of the column, there is a list of every component attribute for all components in the design. We would enable the checkbox for each attribute you would like to include in the bill of materials or clear the checkbox for an attribute that you wish to remove. The default settings for the bill of materials is to cluster by like components. Clustering is achieved by adding component attributes to the grouped columns region of the dialog. We click and drag these attributes out of the grouped columns and drop them back in the all columns section if you prefer every component to be on its own row in the bill of materials. For this project, we will have one line item per component. If we wanted to recreate that, we would simply drag and drop back into that area. The main grid region of the dialog is the content that is written to the bill of materials. In this region, you can click and drag to reorder columns. You can click on a column heading to sort by that column. And if we click into these down arrows here, you can define a value-based filter for a column using the drop down there. We can also right click and force columns into view, which forces the columns to fit the current dialog width. 
The Bill of Materials generator sources its information from the schematic. Enable the Include Parameters from PCB option to access PCB information, such as location and side of the board. And note that this feature can also be used to configure and generate a configurable pick and place file if required. We want to set the Bill of Materials template field here to be the Bill of Materials default template.xlt. Now, of note, when using a template, the order and location of the information presented is determined by the template instead of by the configuration in this dialog. So when you're using a template, it's not necessary to change the column order or anything like that. You do, however, need to make sure that all values referenced in your template are available in the report uh, so that when you generate these files in the template, it's ready to receive that information. If you're interested in looking at the template, simply open this within Excel. They're very self-explanatory and you should be able to create your own or modify the default template to suit your needs. So with this configured, we're gonna go ahead and hit OK. Now that our Gerbers and Bill of Materials have been configured, we wanna make sure that these two outputs are enabled on the Generate Output Files dialog, and then we press the Generate button. Status column will let you know the current status of the generation and will show as passed when it completes. And we can now locate the output files in the project directory. And we can also see that they are being added over here in the generated folder for our project as they're created. And again, if you need to gain access to that, go into your project options under the options folder and you can see which folder those are generated into. So if we go into the project folder for our project here, the default configuration folder mentioned earlier, and within here, the outputs, and you can see the bill materials and the Gerber file outputs here. Uh, this concludes the series of training videos for Circuit Studio. I hope you have found them useful.